So here's what happened. I was absolutely set and ready to go. And then a sneeze hit me and I stood up, tripped over the power cord, unplugged this computer, which shuts it off. And then uh, I had to start over. And uh, there's Stellar. Hi, Stellar. So um, I'm starting over. Sorry. And uh, so here we're starting again. The computer is, is firing up. Um, and uh, it takes a moment to warm up, you know, because it's diesel. And uh, it's going to sit there and chug for a while. And I just heard the startup music. Boom, 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 boom. <coughs> And how's your day? All right, here I am. I'm going to draw a picture, but my picture is on this computer. So we're just waiting for the computer to come around. To come around. If you can do it. I've got a thumb drive plugged into this laptop, and that thumb drive has more memory than the laptop. Hi, John. We're just waiting. We're just waiting for me to... Just waiting for my computer. It's not working. All right, here it comes. Here it comes, maybe. Or not. I'm going to have to fake it. My model. Uh, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. But did you, I, I, I killed it, Stellar. I, I, well, I tripped over the power code, and uh, it doesn't like that. It thinks you shouldn't do that. <clears throat> so, here's a. It might work. Just have to have a little patience. And I don't want to have a little patience. I want it to work. This isn't what I was going to do, but this is what I'm going to do now. So, uh, because I've got a picture to appear on my screen, and it's going to have to do, even though it's not the one I was trying to do, it's just going to have to be, um, so there's this model, this model that I'm using. And uh, she's got a, she's not just curvy in the classic sense, she's 
her, her spine is curvy. Um, and she does, she does poses that are really pretty and you'll look at her and you'll go, oh, it's really pretty. And, uh, and then one day you go to draw her and you go, oh my God, that's not right. What's wrong with her? And I don't know. Apparently, nothing's wrong with her. She's fine, but... Some of her joints are really weird. I like it sometimes when I uh, meet another artist or somebody, you know, and I, I watch what they're doing, and there's something slightly different about what they're doing from how I was taught to do it, or or whatever. And uh, there was this one time, uh, this lady, she drew really well. She was with our our group for quite a while. And then abruptly disappeared, and I never heard from her again. Um, but her thing, and it was something she'd been taught, you know, by whatever instructor. Her thing was ovals. Everything was ovals. So here, I'm going to lighten this up a bit. Um, she'd draw the head, basically an oval. But back of the skull is pretty, pretty round, but then if you include the the chin you know you just draw through the neck there and then you know i usually would draw the neck you know like that um but she said no no think of it as an oval and uh and then think of the rib cage it's a big oval and on top of the rib cage you know there's two lobes of the back you know two halves of the muscles and so you know you kind of think of them as twin oval shapes like that and then you get down here to her her hips and there's like there's like a couple ovals there and then her big butt cheeks it's a couple ovals right like that and um and there's sort of another one right there and then there's like a big one right here up the top of her thighs but kind of another one right right here above the knee you know and she would she would always draw her figures like this from life she would just draw like that and then the calf like so and uh and just kind of diminishing oval shapes Every now and then I remember that and I just say, yeah, look for the ovals because um, it does give that figure a lot of three-dimensional uh, space and, and shape. Um, and uh, <laughs> sometimes people ask me, well, well teach me to draw, <laughs> you know, and, and then they say, well, you know, I don't. I don't know anything. Uh, give me some pointers to get started. I don't know how to answer a question like that. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, it's not as dangerous as trying to just tell somebody how to drive by text message. Um, but still, I almost feel irresponsible even answering uh, the question. Her arm is actually just hanging straight down. That's a little boring. I'm going to do something. I don't know. I'm going to do something. I think I can do that without changing you know, the whole whole dynamic of her body too much. Um, one of the reasons that I don't like to do what she's posing as, she's got all these nice curves. She's got this nice curve to here. And those curves are part of what really tells you this is a woman, not a man. You know, she's young and in good shape. She's uh, muscular, you know, I mean, she's, you know, those curves are really kind of important to defining what kind of a person you're 
you're drawing, and then they get their arm hanging straight down. And you just deleted 50% of the curves on this woman's body. Um, and so I hate doing that. I hate I hate it when the when the model sits in such a way. Sometimes they're they're sitting, they're facing right at you, and their arms are are straight down, uh, you know, straight in front of them, and their whole torso is just uh, it's just gone. You know, it, it's just straight lines. You know, so you may as well make her out of a block of wood. Um, it looks like a Michelin tire man, John says. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but you got to admit, Michelin tire man, I mean, he's got some curves on him. He's got some curves, and this girl's got some curves. We're going for that today. We're. It's an exaggeration, you know. It's like speaking in hyperbole. Um, but it's one way to kind of just get the message across and, and just, you know, get you to look for something other than outlines, you know, something other than trying to go in and do these details, you know, it's just like, well, where do I start? Do I even do that little shoulder blade thing and everything? No, I mean, get your, get the stuff in, get the big shapes down and, and get in there. And this is, a, this is one way to, to do that. And, and look, it really look like something. So there's another oval for the back of her foot. I guess I guess you can call that the heel. Uh, not to get too technical. Um, and if you were drawing more of the top of her foot, there's even, you know, as her ankle comes down like this, and you've got the heel. There's even kind of a big oval shape there, and, an, and another one there. And in a way, a negative oval right there where the arch of her foot comes down. And if you're drawing the bottoms of her feet, there's oval shapes there. And of course, the toes is nothing but a bunch of little oval shapes. So there really is a lot to it. There's a lot that you can just use that as a, as a quick shorthand for drawing body shapes. That is something I'm going to look at later and go, what the hell did I draw? I don't know what I was just trying to draw. But, and then soften that up and come back in with your lines later. Instead of starting with the lines, as I often do, not saying it's wrong. I do it, it can't be wrong. But, uh, It's just an alternate way to do it. Also here, as I'm outlining these shapes that I'm making, you see the outline of the of her upper body comes down and then her hip. You want that, it, it probably does overlap this way as opposed to that way. Um, the, this the shape that's coming towards you, the shape that's closer to you, this is physically a little closer to you than this. So this is going to overlap. And then her butt cheek is even closer to you still. And so that's going to overlap that. And uh, draw that around. So her body comes, her upper body comes down on the other side, but that hip will overlap. Even though I can't see it in in my photo, I can't actually see it, but I know that these shapes should overlap thusly. And again, the calf muscle is going to come in front a little bit. 
Yeah, she's standing kind of splay footed, her feet pointing away from each other. And then, didn't draw this quite right. I've got to pull that in a little bit. She's, she's leaned this way a little bit. And so, that's got to be reflected. Pull that in a little more. And actually, that's got to come out a little So yeah, yeah, that's a good start anyway. Um, so those, uh, it's like hills in a landscape, you know, you're, you're close to this hill. But then this hill is back behind it, and then there's another hill back behind it, and another one, and another one. You know, as you're watching the the rolling hills diminishing away from yourself. So it goes a bit like that. And then... The spinal what's it? It was a bit dusty. I'm having to correct, I keep wanting to put it further away, but that's because her arm is actually right here. It's messing me up visually. Because I'm changing it. Again, soften the lines so that the outlines aren't that vital a thing to the drawing. I mostly want my shadows to be a vital thing to the drawing. So. Lights coming from over here someplace.
Sharon sent a bunch of pictures of eggs. Egg emojis. We've got emojis for everything. Facebook does. My, my text message app doesn't really have that many emojis. Not that many useful ones. There's a whole bunch of ones I have no idea what supposed to do with them. Apparently I'm not supposed to do anything with them. If you needed it, you would know, I guess. We got my flu shot today. That went better than I thought it was going to. The gal that did it was really good. She just wiped my arm. Okay, you're done. Cool. Very cool. I think I put that leg too far over. It's because I'm sitting over here sideways and I, I just get it wrong sometimes. But yeah, I got that wrong. I'm just going to kind of follow the contours like this. Just move the whole thing over. Naturally, I did it on purpose, just for educational reasons, so that you can see how to correct a thing like that.
So, uh, my model, her hair is just kind of hanging down. It's nice, lustrous, dark hair. I've mentioned this before, but every now and then somebody says to me, how come you don't draw anyone ethnic? And there's two answers to that. There's the completely smart ass answer, which is um, everybody's ethnic. Um, and, and then, but it's true. I mean, it's smart ass and factual. Um, and then there's uh, and then there's the fact um, that gosh, we did this for. None of us know. None of us know how long we did this um, because we weren't keeping track. It just didn't occur to anybody to like, you know, write down the date when we first got together and did live drawing. Um, but uh, it's been at least fifteen years, um, <clears throat> and in that time, you know, we went almost every week. And we had, uh, it has to be over a hundred different models. I don't remember, you know, the names of a hundred different models, but we have to have had, at various points, a hundred different models. Out of which I would say, Possibly five or six of them were Caucasian, and the rest were not. And uh, it's so, it's like most of my drawings are of somebody who is not Caucasian. So if they look Caucasian, that's on me. But uh, no, actually, if they look Caucasian, it's mostly on you. Uh, they're, you know, most of them are Hispanic in one way or another. Um, you know, and different races of people, well, you know, they're not that different. They're not so profoundly different that you're going to do a black and white drawing and people are going to go, oh. Well, she's from Cuba, I can tell, because of the unicorn horn growing out of her forehead. There's just nothing that, that unique. Sometimes I try to draw somebody deliberately making them look one thing or another. You know, just generic. I just have a generic. Uh, generic face, you know, a generic thing that I, I just do. Have been told I draw the same girl every single time, uh, no matter who was modeling. I guess that's probably true. It's not intentional, but it's probably true.
Now I'm going to show you what you really all came to see. Where is he? There's my cat, Minnow, sleeping on the floor next to me. I don't know if that actually worked. Did you see Minnow the cat playing on the floor? He's, uh, he's a weird animal. And, um, I've got this cable, a, a cat cable, a cat six cable. Um, Sharon says everyone is charcoal colored. That's correct. And something about flu shots. They use a tiny needle. Um, yeah, um, it, it was. I guess it has to have been a really tiny. Needle. That's the difference between that and a blood shot, right? And then a blood test, they they use a big giant tube and and suck all my blood out because i mean that doesn't really hurt hurt it's it's still just psychological but oh my god it kills me to get a blood test i just i just die and and it doesn't help like afterwards <laughs> you know i got the thing around my my uh, elbow and, and i just look down at it and go Ugh. And, you know, all day I, I'm, I'm i'm wrecked all day and actually, for longer than that, I'll I'll be, uh, you know, if it, if it bruises and stuff, <laughs> I'll have that reminder of it, and, and I'll kind of be weak and and everything for for days. I've got a Cat6 cable that I've got to run from my computer up to the router up front. Um, and, uh, yeah, you saw him. He's a bit of a chonk. Yeah, he, just a little. A little bit. Come on. Maybe he could use an, he could lose an ounce or something. But, uh, I gotta run this cable, and Minnow has a weird phobia of electrical cords and stuff, and he seems to be particularly bent out of shape by this by this Cat Five Cat Six cable. Freaks him out. But the cute thing is, the last couple of times, while he's freaked out, he'll come back in here and and lay down near me um which i thought was going to be like the last thing that would ever happen you know he would just stick, go hide under the bed until until he uh knew that i was done doing my video but but he'll he'll come in here and lay next to me because he's i don't know i don't know if he's safe in here maybe he's protecting me from from the evil cable Anyways, it's sweet. I like to I like to look down and see him sitting right there. He's a little chunky, but I'm not gonna say anything because I'm a little chunky myself. Um, I may not be here tomorrow. I'm gonna go to the zoo and walk around. Just for a little while, however long it takes um, to be skinny. I'll come back when I'm skinny. And, um, but yeah, I'm going to go to the zoo and walk around. Actually, it may take as long as it takes for me to freak out because I'm out in public and there's other people. Uh, but I think it should be better than going to the grocery store because... I've got more room to walk away. So I think it'll be all right.
We've both had allergies, which give us a little bit of a stuffy head and a runny nose, a stuffed nose. Go live from the zoo? Um, I might. I might. I don't know. Maybe so. Might do that. Um, yeah, that could happen. I've got a. I've got a stick. I've got a. What do you call it? A selfie stick? Gotta to remember to pack that. And, uh, we might try that. We might try that. They're open till 5 in the afternoon, and it's quite possible um, my endurance won't last that long anyway. I might be home by 2 in the afternoon, anyhow. I'm just not predicting anything. I mean, I won't be physically exhausted. I might be mentally exhausted. It's very challenging to look at a rhinoceros while it stands there. Posted a picture yesterday that was uh, um, it was just one of my old life drawings, but I'd done it on a a piece of blue gray paper. Um, I don't remember why I had the blue gray paper, but I did, and um, and some little. Uh, terracotta colored pencils that I used instead of charcoal and uh, you know and I I continued with the theme and used the same colors to to do her the jewelry that I made up and put on her and, and everything and everybody thought it was wonderful you know like oh my god that, you, that's amazing you know and uh, you should do that more often and, and stuff and it's like I did not do anything special. It, it, then as far as a drawing is concerned, it's exactly like everything else that I always do. Um, it's just the color of the pencil and the color of the uh, paper that I was drawing on. It gives you that really nice, warm, cool contrast. Um, somewhere up here on the shelf, I think I might have some more of that kind of paper. It's kind of annoying if you buy a pad of like, charcoal paper there'll be like four sheets of gray and four sheets of brown and four sheets of black and four sheets of white it's like the white's nothing special the black's impossible to work with <laughs> I, i've never been successful doing that kind of work on black and uh <clears throat> you know the brown and the blue are really nice and you wish they just do a whole pad of that uh and not mess with the black and the white but uh, that's what they always have, and then you can you can go a, a big step up and buy single sheets of paper at the art supply store that are meant for stuff like that. But they're um, you know one sheet's the price of a whole pad of paper, <laughs> so uh, you don't you don't uh, when you're just fiddling around with life drawing class you don't go for that stuff very often. 
Um, Jaren said hi, Fielden. So I'm going to assume that Fielden's in here somehow. Uh, it's interesting that you guys have that metric and I do not. Uh, but on this end, uh, you're invisible unless you make a comment. Um, and then I can, I can see afterwards, I can look at all my likes and everything, but, uh, I didn't see it at the time. And, uh, so it's been 40 minutes. Like I say, um, I'll be back tomorrow if I can swing it. Um, if I happen to be at the zoo, uh, you know, even if I leave early, maybe I'll try to do a selfie cam something at the zoo. I, I don't know. Um, oh, uh, you were saying it's hard to, it's hard, awkward to draw and, and you hold the can, hold the cell phone. I follow a guy named James Gurney. Um, he's an artist who did uh, created Dinotopia, which is a fantasy world where Victorian people intermingle with dinosaurs, and uh, and the dinosaurs seem to be somewhat intelligent and, and whatnot. Um, that's really cool. But he's also an expert on dinosaurs, and so he's illustrated. Uh, a number of dinosaur projects, including uh, uh, the official postage stamps that had the dinosaur set. He did those. Um, but he also, although I'm really into fantasy art, I'm not actually particularly into any of that. What I'm really into is um, his plein air paintings, where he goes out and paints from life. Um, He'll do a forest or an old house or an old rusty truck or a tractor or something like that. And um, he's got quite the setup and he's always recreating it, but he's got quite the setup where he, he has a, a camera tripod with that little clip thing that you clip your camera to. Only he clips, he attaches one of the top part of that to something like an old cigar box or or something you know or something he's constructed that's a bit like an old cigar box but he'll 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 have that and he'll clip it and then he's replaced the hinges on the cigar box with these um with these lock hinges so they go click 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 and they stay where you put them and and um and, and then he's got his whole you know watercolor thing you know he's you know the, the top part is now the easel the top part is the easel and all his equipment's down in the lower part and and so you can set all that stuff up and and paint anywhere and um uh you know all of his there's there's magnets glued down all over the the inside of the box and then all of his other stuff has magnets on it so you can you know let go of a brush and it goes click <laughs> you know and just snaps onto the the set it was really slick and uh it's so um there's a Facebook group on, <laughs> that he started about building uh, sketch easels. Uh, and so I've been following that and going, oh, yes, one day maybe I'll do all that. Um, and uh, my friend Sue actually does a lot better than me. She's more clever than I am with making things. And she's made herself little travel easels and stuff like that. And so uh, uh, someday uh, we'll all go plein air painting together. And, uh, uh, and, and someday I'll have a kit like that to take to the zoo. Not today. I don't have that today. So I've just got my my junk uh, is stuffed in my little uh, shoulder bag, and we'll see what happens. Uh, so going to do that tomorrow. If I'm home early enough, I'll do the regular thing. And if I'm not, maybe I'll try it from there. And talk to you tomorrow or... Uh, Today's Wednesday, tomorrow or Friday. Have a good day. Thank you.